Hi, this is Brian. Do you have a bench grinder that is so slow to start to the point where it's irritating to use? Well, that can be fixed. Today's video is how to fix that. I have a small bench grinder in my garage that I used to hate, but I made one small change to it. Now I love it. It's my go-to grinder. I use it every day. But before we get into it, I have to just warn you of one thing. Today's video is a video on what can be done, not necessarily how to do it. To do what I'm going to show you today, you have to have some pretty good electrical knowledge, knowledge of electrical motors, an ohm meter, and knowledge of how to use it. So again, this video is on what can be done and what I did, not necessarily on how to do it. So let's go to the garage and let's get started. Stand by. This grinder is about a one-fifth horsepower grinder. It's handy for small tasks, which is mostly what I do. For large tasks, you have to use a bigger grinder. However, this grinder was so slow to start. It took many seconds for it to start. And even then, it would bog down so fast. That was so irritating, but it can be fixed. And it can be fixed by adding a start relay. Without the start relay, it would take about three seconds to come up to speed. Then it would bog down so easily too. And of course it would take even longer then for it to come back up to speed. But now with this relay on, it'll start within a second and the motor is so much more powerful. Let me demonstrate. Just like that, it's up to speed. Now, isn't that nice? I'll let the grinder coast back down. The good news is, these relays are really cheap. They're easy to find. They are sold by voltage and horsepower. They have a maximum current draw. This was the smallest one that this particular company sells. That's the good news. The good news is they're cheap and easy to find. The bad news is they're designed for refrigeration compressors. The wiring diagram that comes with the relay is drawn for refrigeration machinery. And to install this relay, this is where you have to have knowledge of electricity. You have to adapt the wiring diagram from this relay, which is meant for a refrigeration compressor, you have to adapt that to your grinder. To do that, you have to have a pretty good knowledge of electric motors. You have to have an ohm meter and know how to use it. And not everybody will be able to do this. And I understand that. Also, the other problem is this relay does not fit into the pedestal of the grinder. So I have mine mounted out here like this. This is not proper electrical installation. Although I did a pretty good job, I used anti-short bushings and everything, but it's still not correct. Don't do what I did here. I always threaten to make a new pedestal, a pedestal large enough to get the relay in. But this base that it's on, I made this base about 25 years ago and I got this grinder. This base is so perfect, you know, it holds the can of water, it holds the stone for truing up the wheel. I slide it to the edge of my toolbox and then put that down. Oh, I can't part with this base now, but I should make a better pedestal for this. By the way, folks, if it sometimes seems like I'm reading from a script, it is. I'm an engineer. My style is to write a script for everything and try follow that so I get all of the things that I want to cover. So yeah, I'm going back and forth between a private document and this video. So for you to understand this relay, we have to talk about this motor. This motor is known as a PSC motor. That stands for Permanently Split Capacitor Motor. PSC motors have a start winding and just one single capacitor, a start capacitor, trickling a little bit of 
electricity into the start winding. PSC motors are really common. Your refrigeration compressor and your air conditioner, your refrigerator, the fan motor on your outside condensing unit, your furnace fan motor, all of those are examples of PSC motors. They're cheap, they're easy to build, but they have low starting torque. That's the deal. Now, you can feed more electricity into the start winding, and that's what this relay is going to do. And it has a start capacitor. So if you use a start capacitor and feed electricity into the start winding, that's known as a capacitor start motor. And capacitor start motors have to have some sort of relay to switch that off as soon as the motor comes up to speed. Otherwise the start winding would burn out real fast. When you have a relay in a start capacitor and a run capacitor as this motor had, now it's known as capacitor start and capacitor run motor. That's the best combination. Those motors have good starting torque, they have good running torque, and it's just all around a better motor. And it's this relay that does it. Checking my script, I wanted to mention that the start windings in these motors are capable of doing so much more. The manufacturer just puts a simple run capacitor on and trickles a little bit of current into the start winding at all times. Remember, I said that's the cheap and easy way to do things. But the start winding is capable of doing so much more. I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. And by the way, I believe that adding this start capacitor is actually easier on the motor because now the motor comes up to speed much faster. And when motors are running slow of speed, that's when they overheat. So this capacitor keeps the motor up to speed much better. The grinder does not bog down nearly as much. And in the end, the grinder runs cooler. Let me just demonstrate this one more time. How nice is that? And the motor has much more torque now. Yeah, if you want to do some serious grinding, you can't rely on a little bench grinder like this. You have to use bigger, more powerful tools, which I have. But most of my work is this and a fine wheel. That's most of what I do. And now this grinder is just perfect. So let's take it apart and see how we install this capacitor. In my notes, I wanted to talk about protection, though, first. Just note that adding this relay, this 3-in-1 start relay, the motor itself is still protected by its thermal overload protection that the manufacturer put into this motor when it was manufactured. Plus, in my garage, the circuit is protected by a 15-amp circuit breaker. Plus, in my garage, as well as the way yours should be, every outlet is GFI protected as well. So this motor is protected from thermal overload. The circuitry is protected from overload from the 15 amp circuit breaker that this is on. And I am protected from shock from the GFI. I just wanted to mention that. And by the way, just a safety speech here. If you don't have GFI outlets in your garage, get them. Okay, I tipped the grinder over and took the base off. Here's my platform. And here's what you need to do. This is the hard part. You can see inside, that's the run capacitor that I was talking about. That is what the manufacturer did to make this a permanently split capacitor motor. But, you have to use your ohm meter and you have to determine which of the wires in here are start, run, and common. You have to know how to use your ohm meter to do that. And there was no diagram with this grinder either. But I know how to do that kind of stuff. Then what you have to do 
is make a diagram. This is my handwriting. This is how I learned how to do things. This is how I did things when I worked out in the field. I made diagrams like that. And this diagram makes sense to me. All of these notes make sense. For example, here, I was ohming out various things so I could determine the start winding and the run winding. And here, I could determine which wires came out of the grinder. And this is what you will have to do. And this is the complicated part. This is the part where not everybody can do it. And don't ask me to help you. I'm not an advisor. I'm not going to tell you how to modify the wiring in your grinder. All I know is how I modified the wiring in this particular grinder. And I made a very good diagram because I'm going to get another grinder. I don't like changing wheels. I can. But I don't like doing that. That's a hassle. It'd be much better to have another grinder. So I have to find another cheapy grinder like this. And I'm going to get another one of these relays. Here's the number, by the way. You can get this at eBay. Any appliance repair shop would have these. You have to get your own meter out. And it's this lead in particular that comes from the electric motor. You have to learn what's what. Then you have to adapt the wiring diagram for the relay to what you have. And weird things happen when you do that. Look, for example, you're going to have red wires going to white wires and things like that. That's not normal. But that's because this 3-in-1 relay is meant for a refrigeration compressor. And they do have a standard way of doing things. But electrically speaking, thinking like the flow of electrons, this motor is exactly the same as a motor in a refrigeration compressor where this relay would be used. It's just that the wiring is different. And you have to adapt the wiring. So let me go back to my notes to make sure I've covered everything. Well, again, I think I covered everything. As I mentioned, this is a video on what can be done, not necessarily on how to do it. Because how to do it takes some advanced electrical knowledge. You have to know how to use an ohmmeter. No trick getting the relay. That's the easy part. And I'm sorry, I can't help you with what you have. If you want to do this, and it really makes a difference on the grinder. It just bought this thing to life. But you have to do it yourself. Say, also on my workbench, I have this cheapy drill press. And I like it because it fits. But someday when I retire and have time, guess what? I'm going to give this thing the treatment too. And I will do the same thing. Here's my script that I go off of. I will make a diagram just like this one. I'll buy another one of these relays and that'll bring that drill press to life. Just like it bought this grinder to life. Well, this is Brian. I hope you found this video useful. Again, I apologize if it's something you can't do. Not everybody will be able to do this. But for those of you who can, this really makes a difference on how these motors operate. So once again, thank you for watching my video and enjoy.